Well, it's good to be with you again. And um, for my message today, I was thinking of Proverbs 17, 22, where it says this, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. And I want you and me to consider for these few moments that we'll spend together in God's Word about um, how do we look at life. Uh, this passage is an interesting one because... Um, uh, the writer of Proverbs is saying this, uh, very straightforward, a, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Now, I've looked at some different commentaries, and some people think it's the best medicine, and I'm not going to go that far. But I, I will say this, is that how you and I look at life has a direct bearing on literally our physical, a physical aspect of our life. But I want to I wanna lay some things out first because I want you to consider this. I'm not talking about subscribing to the joke of the day delivered to your email, with, your email uh, box each day. I do like to listen to comedians and um, on some YouTube videos there's um, some, and I like plain humor, I should say that. Uh, there's some of these guys that uh, that just I can I can laugh and laugh and because I think a lot of times life some aspects of life are really funny, but I'm really not talking about becoming the person that when you see them the first thing they do let me share this joke with you let me share this joke with you and it's really not this idea of laughing although uh, if you I, I did look some things up and here's what a doctor says about laughing is uh, today's doctors tell us that a hearty laugh is great exercise. When you emit an explosive laugh, they say your diaphragm descends deep into your body and your lungs expand, greatly increasing the amount of oxygen being taken into them. At the same time, as it expands sideways, the diaphragm gives your heart a gentle, rhythmic massage. That noble organ responds by being faster and harder. Circulation speeds up. Liver, stomach, pancreas, spleen, and gallbladder are, are all stimulated. Your entire system gets an invigorating lift, all of which confirms what Aristotle said about laughter more than 2,000 years ago. It is a bodily exercise precious to health. And then he goes on and he says there's a downside to laughter, the wrong kind of laughter, um, where he says, but not all laughter is, help, is healthful. A uh, psychology professor from, a from the University of Tennessee reports that when laughter and smiling are used in an aggressive way to sneer at, to ridicule, to embarrass, they are non-healthy and can readily do more harm to the laughter than the one who is or, or the laugher than the one who is laughed at. And so this passage, and so we're going to talk about a merry heart. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Now we all understand what medicine is and, and how medicine does help us and then we get better. And so um, when we talk about this idea of having to remind people that we ought to be happy, that we ought to have times where we laugh, that means because we have times in our life where we're not happy, times that we, we don't laugh. And so I would put it this way, and I say this quite often, but I want you to hear me on this. Everybody has problems, period. I don't even have to go into great detail. But, and a lot of times what happens is we've been taught ever since we've been little that you know, when we look at somebody, well, they don't have problems. And we always say, the grass is always greener on the other side, correct? Until you get over there, and then they have just as many brown spots in their yards, and they, because they have just as many problems. I, when Everybody has fears. And so, you know, when I used to work in manufacturing, you, you would see some people that they were just, they were never happy. And what... What the Word of God says is that that has a bearing on our physical body too. When we allow problems and we allow fears to control us, it has a draining effect on us physically, but also emotionally. Job is my 
go-to guy when I think of a person who has problems and a person who has fears. Because Job was so transparent, and God is transparent, showing us, or even allowing us to hear the words, and here's the passage, Job 3.25, For the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. And so, when God and Satan had the conversation about Job, God said to Satan, Job was a man who is upright, who was perfect, who loved God and hated evil. Now, if the fact that Job had some fears in his life and God said he was still a man that was a, a godly man, that means that the fears that I have do not take away from my relationship with God. And because the example of Job, plain and simple. Every person has problems, every person has fears. But what I'm talking about is the word of God is encouraging us not to allow those to control our lives. I, I think of, um, I was teaching a series on um, creation out of Genesis chapters one through 11. And some materials that I've got from Ken Ham's ministry, Answers in Genesis, I find it interesting that, and, and very instructive is that we have the evidence of a world. And the secular world looks at the world, the Christian world looks at the world, and they come to two opposite conclusions because of the glasses that they view the world through. The secular will um, view it through the eyes of evolution and human reasoning. And the believer uses the glasses of the word of God. And so really when it comes down to life, which glasses am I choosing to look at life through? There's a lot of things that we can be thankful for. And yet, you know what I find I struggle with in my life? It's just this idea of being happy about the stuff or the things or the blessings in my life. I, I, I'm thankful for my home. And yet, I live in the borough of, borough of Freeburg, a very small town, and I don't have three, four acres to mow. I have a small lot that I could very quickly mow, and uh, when I was a, a much younger man, I would get home from work, and 17 minutes later, I had the lawn mowed. But I was standing in my, I was standing on my back porch on Monday, and I was um, reflecting on how God has blessed me. And I have to admit, that makes me happy. And so when we think of a merry heart, we're thinking about this idea of I've all, all got to be laughing. And I love to laugh And people who are around me. When I preach, I use humor in my sermons. People will sit and listen to sermons that I, the church where I pastor here at First Baptist, and, and, and we'll laugh. I, I remember my first ministry up in the Northern Tier had a couple, couple delightful couple. And they visited the church, and the, the mom and the dad and the kids, and they were sitting there. And, of course, I use humor, and people were laughing. And they told me later on, they said, we have not laughed like that for 15 years. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Years ago, I was visiting, uh, my wife and I were visiting a, a, a couple that we went to college with. And we were on vacation, and we stopped in, and we spent that whole evening catching up. And um, we were, uh, I think we were playing Pinochle and just laughing and having a good time. And uh, my daughter decided to leave her suitcase there. So uh, we drove, next day we drove about two hours away and realized it had to come back and we met. And uh, the, the wife said, I woke up today and my ribs hurt. And she goes, I couldn't figure it out. And then she said this, that's because we were laughing. That, you know, here's the thing. I want to ask you, how long has it been since you've been happy? And you say, well, why would you talk about that? Well, because I think we live, uh, and you'll hear this word all the time, unprecedented. Well, in my life, I've never experienced a government that would get up and say, you know, don't go to work. 
we're going to shut down businesses, we are going to decide what's essential and what's not essential, and, and people are going to panic. And I've never lived in such a time where people were in so much fear. Okay? But I also realize this, is that we don't have to allow that to control us. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that I am blessed beyond measure. And because I am blessed, I am happy. And so I don't necessarily agree with everything that's going on, but that, you know what? That doesn't take from my happiness. We all have problems in our life. I could tell you all my problems, but you know what you would do then? You'd check out after about the second uh, line and say, okay, he's got problems, you know, and, you know, and a lot of times what we do is if we're not careful, we send out invitations to a huge pity party. And we want everybody to join our pity party when my God reigns, period. Amen? R-E-I-G-N-S. I think I spelled it right. Not R-A-I-N-S. My God is sovereign. And, and that's enough. That's enough. What glasses do you have on today? How are you looking at the circumstances in your life today? How am I looking at the circumstances in my life? Many of them are very traumatic and takes a little while to get over. I would never tell someone a broken arm just to wrap it up and go on. I would tell them to go get help. But you know what? The Word of God is our help. And first of all, God says that a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Weeks ago, I taught a lesson on James chapter 1 where he says, you know what? If you got these trials in your life, ask me for wisdom. Oh, okay. Yeah, why? Because God wants us to be victorious. I, can't, I seen this on a church sign one time. Discouragement looks down. Worry looks around. But faith looks up. And I'm here to say this. Let's put on the glasses of faith. Let's put on, let's look at this world. Let's look at everything in our lives through the lens of faith. You know, just a few words to encourage you. We have all kinds of medicines in our medicine cabinet. And maybe we ought to take, well, maybe we ought to take one of the little, um, Band-Aid boxes, or you know how they would be in the metal tins and empty it out and then take a nice maybe three by five card and tape around there and put um, um, a merry heart on that and put that in the medicine cabinet so that when we go to the medicine cabinet and we almost that we remind ourselves, you know, God's word says this, trust me, trust me with your life. But don't trust me hanging on in sorrow. Trust me with a heart that rejoices in God who can do anything. Just a few words to encourage you with out of Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 22. Let's pray. Father, I'm thankful for your word and for who you are. And I have to admit, there's many times in my life where the things that go on around are distressing, they are loud, and they are hard to ignore. But Father, you've not asked me to bury my head in the sand. You've asked me to trust you, to see you, to look through the eyes of faith. But even more than that, to find my reason to live in you, but also my purpose and my joy. Lord, give us that merry heart that we would be pleasant people to be around, that others might see Christ in us. For I ask it in the name of our wonderful Savior, Jesus.